Hello, conscious creators. Welcome to my home office in Longmont, Colorado. Check out my fancy velvet blue chairs. Yes, nice, right? Well, I'm so glad to be here. I want to say thank you to the thousand plus 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 people who read my blog last week on abundance. Oh, it was so great to hear from you and all your stories. We had Amy from New Orleans who moved there with just a backpack only to find that her true desire was to be there in that culture working in an art gallery. She met her husband. Quite the story to just pack up and leave as an adult and travel to somewhere new with a backpack and only a backpack and then to create a whole new life. We also heard from Lindsay who uh, had quit her job and then her husband recently decided to quit his job to pursue their soul pursuits and see what would happen. So really cool stories and I want to thank you guys so 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 much for reading my blog. It means a lot to me. Um, I felt so alone when I was going through the divorce, quitting my job, just doing the whole restructuring of my life. And if I can share with anyone and have them not feel alone um, or embarrassed by their story, I feel like I'm doing my job. So today I wanted to <coughs> uh, have a video blog instead. Um, and that way I can talk with my hands. Yes, um, Texans and Italians, right? We like to talk with our hands. So what I wanted to talk about was energy, not just our energy, but the energy of everybody else around us. Uh, most people know me as a happy-go-lucky uh, Texan woman who likes to drink a little bit of wine, just a little bit, and have fun and dance and be silly. Um, and that's true. I am a happy-go-lucky uh, Texas lady who likes to have fun. And I also get the blues. Yes, even conscious cowgirls get the blues. And not only do I get the blues, sometimes I get the blacks. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, it just happens less frequency, less in frequency now um, that I've moved through this uh, conscious shift, this evolution of really connecting at the soul level, um, really listening to that soul voice over that yakety yak human voice in the brain that says, oh, you shouldn't do this, or you should do this, or you're not good enough, or we don't have enough money for that, or this person doesn't really like you, all that junk, and just really finding that alignment with the soul and living from that deep inner knowing that we all have within us, the master within us, the soul. Um, so when we start to make that connection with the soul, it's really easy. Well, it's not easy, but once we make that connection and feel that soul um, vibration and know what that soul voice is we can really connect with it and it's really easy to stay in that space uh if we're alone right so we get in that space we're alone we're walking through life everything's really good and then bam something happens and here we are back on the ground crying buckets of tears um that happened to me on saturday it hasn't happened in last saturday it hasn't happened in a really long time I had some girlfriends over on Friday night, normal thing, you know, nice spread, some wine, really did it up. And I had uh, two girlfriends come over who I think are absolutely lovely, lovely souls. Um, but one was kind of going through some troubles and that's okay. We all do. And we should be able to talk with our friends about it. Um, but I, you know, I, we had fun, I thought, and you know, we had a nice dinner on Friday night. And then on Saturday, I was just crying buckets of tears in my bed. I could not get out of bed. And I said, soul, what, what is this? What, what's going on? Why am I sad? And I, you know, I went through the list of what I could be sad about and I really didn't have anything. Um, you know, I still get sad about my dad being gone. I really loved having his physical presence, but I understand where he's going and what he's doing on the other side. And, you know, I've kind of started to adapt my life. So that couldn't be it. Other than that, you know, it'd be nice to have a partner sometimes, but I really like being alone and I have a long, long list of things I want in a partner. Um, before I get there, but none of that's really that big a deal to make me sit there and cry buckets in bed I mean, it was so bad. You know, it's one of those things where you lying on the floor in the bathroom going I just want to die like I'm not gonna kill myself, but if I just croaked right now, I'd be okay I know you've all felt that deep just like sadness So I started to do some soul-searching this week. What was that? Was that really mine? And it wasn't um, it turns out that, you know, I was in the energy of someone going through a trauma and they were spilling out that energy of trauma energy, trauma, um, combat, combative energy, um, all these different things, basically energetically releasing into my house. And as I said, there's nothing wrong with that. However, 
I let what I I didn't I said to myself I let my guard down and my soul says you didn't let your guard down you let your awareness down I wasn't aware of the energy dynamics of what was going on because I just wasn't thinking about it I wanted it to blow off some steam have a good time not talk about all these deep spiritual conscious things and just you know be human for a bit um, so I wasn't thinking about energy and being aware of it, but it's something that we always need to uh, to be. It's like don't drink and drive, don't drink without awareness. Having a glass of wine and not really being aware of the energy surrounding you is something I won't do again. Um, it was basically like, and this has happened to me before, and I'm sure you guys have experienced, someone has come to hang out with me and energetically chat, released, um, and just unaware of what they were doing. Uh, this happened to me um, probably about six months ago was the last time, and it literally felt like a film, a slime was poured over my house. But I was able in that situation to identify it quickly, um, you know, clear out the space in whatever way, just with intention, open up a few windows, open up a few doors, all the energy out. Um, but this one was hard to shake. I mean, it really touched something deep in me, but it also did something really wonderful in me. It stirred this like, okay, there was this deep uh, wound inside of me and because this person came into my life and had this energetic explosion, uh, I was able to see that I hadn't healed, I hadn't dealt with it enough. So this week, to get, all, get it all out, I did a variety of things and I just wanted to share some of those things just to get the energy moving. I did a painting. Yep, I did a couple of these. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, I'm not the best artist, but it was fun. There's my snake of transformation and some flowers that I saw in Italy. It just moved energy. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter its meaning. It moved energy. I also sang a lot. I had dance parties in my house, just getting that energy moving. I went out and met a few new friends this week that can operate in that easy space where we don't get so personal. We can just kind of hang out, laugh, talk about stuff that's... Uh, not so deep, not so traumatic, and you know, it's good to have both kinds of friends, right? The ones where you can go really go deep and dive in there, and then ones that you can just hang out with, have fun, go see a movie, um, you know, talk about what your favorite grocery store in town is since I just moved here and I'm learning. Um, but what it really comes down to is figuring out where your energy ends and someone else's begins, right? What is that dividing line? And really asking ourselves, is this mine? When I have these deep feelings, like on Saturday when I was just like, I just want to die. I don't want to die. I love life. I love every single thing about it. I love you guys. I love writing. I love traveling. I love posting on Facebook, much to your chagrin most of the time. I love my dog. I don't want to die. So spending all Saturday long thinking I want to die, feeling that so deeply, it made me realize that I still have a lot of work to do on this, figuring out where my energy stops and the next person's begins. You see what I'm saying? So it's, I often tell my clients when they're creating from soul um, that a good sign that you're doing something that you are, you're kind of on the right track is things feel really expansive. Um, you know, you're creating a new uh, website, or you're writing a book, or you're starting a new company. Um, all of those creative processes, you're, you know, creating an album, you're writing a song, whatever it is. If it feels expansive, it's kind of like you're on the right track. You wake up, you feel inspired, everything just seems to open up. The clouds part, the water parts, and you're just strolling on through. And then the warning signs when things feel restrictive. And I'm not talking about waking up and going, I kind of feel tired today, you know, whatever. That's not a reason to drop your dream, but if every time you go to the dream and it starts to feel tight and restrictive, that's not a soul creation. That's, the, that's your soul saying, hey, stop, take a step back and let's reassess this. And maybe you go about it a different way or maybe you drop the dream and you move on to the next one. Because God knows we all have, you know, a hundred different opportunities floating around. They're all like balloons and we just grab whichever one we want. Um, and we want to focus on one for a bit to make it to bring the uh, inspiration into the action and into the product. Um, so we do have to have some focus and not always just walk away from everything every time we kind of get a nudge. But if things are just continually restrictive, then it's time to walk on. And so I started to think about that with friends and with people in my life. And I, you know, I just I pride myself on being a damn good friend. 
I'm always there. It's almost like I've developed this like weird identity around it. And that's something I really need to release and let go and just be in the easy space of people coming in my life and out of my life. But I like, I want to hold on to friends. I want, I want to love them so much. I want them to feel supported. Um, you know, I don't have a whole lot of family uh, that I talk to a lot. Um, and so my friends, they're, they're, they're my deep connections, you know? And so I was ignoring something, this continual restrictive feeling that I felt in another person's presence. Um, it, I, I started to look back and it's like, have we ever laughed? Have we ever had fun? Or was it just always going through trauma and emotion and so deep? And, you know, those things are great. You should, but you should be able to have both. It should, you know, relationship can open up. It can constrict. You, if it's constricted, you can walk away from it and even come back to it. Just like we do with creating, um, you know, our businesses, our art, whatever it is that we create solely or, or in a group. But learning to apply that to friendships is uh, something that I've been really working on this week. And uh, really being honest with myself and really checking in with my soul and really uh, allowing myself to read the energies of group dynamics and friends. Um, I can get so overwhelmed by so many feelings, feeling other people's feelings, which is something I've been doing my whole life and not just other people's, but the world's feelings, which is a whole nother topic. But really going into that and saying, okay, can I be so in my space, my soul space, my I am presence, can I be so aligned just like I am alone, just like I am in nature and when no one is around me, can I take that and carry it through my life, carry it with my friends and my family and everyone that I interact with? I do it with my clients each and every day. I absolutely love you guys and I love interacting with you. But when I meet with a client, I am so aligned into my soul space. I'm so listening to my soul voice and my human voice that I tend to shift when I move into fun friend time with wine and hors d'oeuvres and music and all of those other things. Um, so really learning how to, once we identify that soul voice, once we identify what it feels like to be in that soul alignment, remembering that when we move into interacting with other people, um, in my case, especially with casual friends rather than business acquaintances or clients, um, you know, or something more formal. So really taking that soul alignment and taking it into my casual life every day. So that's my thing that I'm working on, my aha moment. And uh, hopefully I'll avoid a day like Saturday where I was, you know, feeling someone else's feelings draped on the bathroom floor, crying my eyes out for something that didn't even belong to me. Um, there's a saying um, that it, one of my teachers said that it's 90% or more of what you're feeling and thinking is not yours. This membrane, this energetic membrane around our head is so thin. Um, it's where those ideas come that I should do this, I have to do this, whatever. Um, they come from society, from mass consciousness. I know with the Orlando shooting, which is, I can't even feel that right now. Um, I'm, I'm going to process that <laughs> later. I'm too busy dealing with my friend's stuff. But feeling so deeply into those things, it helps to be aware and say, yes, I'm feeling this and this is why, but it's not mine. I'm still allowing that feeling to come through. I'm not pushing it out. I'm not saying it's wrong or bad. I'm not labeling it. Just like I'm not labeling this friend who's been through a legitimate trauma and is trying to process it. I am not blaming her. We're going to stop that blame game. It's just about awareness and identifying where these feelings came from that had me debilitated last weekend. And then moving forward and saying, okay, um, what role did I play in this? Um, I probably didn't support that friend. Um, in a, a way I could have by just staying in my soul alignment. Um, you know, uh, the person who's coming in into your house should also be responsible for their energy. But when someone's going through a great trauma, like when I lost my dad, I definitely energetically shat on people. Um, cause I just couldn't control it. It was just an eruption, like a volcano of grief that was coming out of me. Once I got a handle on that, I learned to manage my energy where I wasn't exploding. Um, but in that situation so no blame just about awareness and identification of whether the energy that and the, the feeling and the experience that you're having is it really yours or did it come from something outside of you whether it's something that happened in mass consciousness globally 
um, like what we experienced in the past week. And just with this political cycle, I mean, it's just nasty energy. If you find yourself snapping at people, that's the kind of energy that this political se season brings and saying, is this mine? Am I really this angry? Or is that somebody else's? Um, and just also being really aware of who you're bringing into your space, especially your house, your sacred space and your circle. And even maybe having a conversation with your friends saying, hey, I really need you to, I'm sensitive right now and I'm working on this awareness and it would be helpful if you were aware of your energy as well. Um, I mean, we're all doing our best here and it's just about bringing awareness to it. And it's not something you need to like sit there and analyze mentally. I see the gears ticking in your head. But really just um, feeling into something and saying, what's going on here? And I always like to do the, the take the step back and survey the room. When I walk into a big crowded uh, restaurant or rock concert, I do something where I stand back and I look, start to look at each person individually and just kind of reading their energy as I move along, just getting a read of the room, a read of the uh, collective energy and the ind individual energy going on around me. Um, if I'm choosing a seat in a movie theater or uh, open admission concert, I kind of feel out, okay, so the people sitting next to me, because I'm going to have the best experience possible, and I think I'll get to the point where nothing ever affects me at all. But I just choose to be around people whose energy is uh, conscious and in alignment, and even if they're going through a trauma, they're aware of it. Um, so I'm not saying that uh, if you have friends that uh, make you feel drained, and that was the other thing I noticed. It's like, okay, I hang out with someone, and how do I feel the next day? How do I feel after they leave my house? Do I feel like I was supported and built up, and do I feel joyful, or do I feel like I've been drained? Like someone put in an IV and sucked out half my blood. That's what I felt like last Saturday, and I'm taking full responsibility for it. I was an equal partner in this experience. But also, like, you can take a step back from those friends that leave you feeling drained and, uh, you know, just give it some space. And that doesn't mean you can never be friends with them again, but really stepping back and giving that expansion always helps. Giving that friend space, giving yourself space and really assessing the situation. Is this friendship serving me? Is this relationship serving me? And just having that space instead of... Um, my human's tendency is to just peck and peck and peck and peck until I drive someone away and say, you did this to me and you did that. And that's the human voice. And the soul goes, oh no, no one did anything to us. We're having an experience and that's what it was. It was a very intense experience that I had last Saturday, but it was uh, hugely eye-opening. And I am so grateful to be aware enough to know um, how to process it, how to think about it, and to really um, thank that person who came into my life for being the mirror that showed me where I can improve in life. And this person, this friend, really showed me um, where I need to improve, and that's taking my soul in alignment, and that space that I hold when I'm in nature, when I'm with my dog, when I'm with my clients, holding that space always throughout the day. Um, even if I'm hanging out with my friends, drinking wine, making jokes, or whatever. So, huge lesson. Um, and just to review, the things that we talked about today is really feeling into if something is expansive, whether we're creating or we're in other people's energy. Does it make you feel expanded or does it make you feel constricted? And then, and that restriction being just like a yellow light. Slow down. Yield. And then really figuring out where does my um, energy stop and the next person's begin. And really asking yourself at the soul level, soul, is this mine? Is this something that belongs to me that I need to process and move through? Or am I feeling something that belongs to someone else or to society or to a specific culture that I'm a part of? And really just feeling into that and then letting go through the art that I talked about, through singing, uh, whatever your outlet is, uh, exercise, I like swimming these days. So whatever it is, just moving that energy through you, allowing it to release, you know, and if you need to cry, if you need to yell, scream in your house when you're alone, great, let it out, let it out. And then just make note of what you learned without judgment. Do not beat yourself up. I have a list of things that my human would love to beat me up about that happened last weekend. Instead, I'm going to let that go and just, it's a teachable moment, feeling very objective on how I can improve and uh, also 
really setting boundaries in the future for what I'm allowing into my house and what I'm not. What I'm going to be tolerant of in friendships and, and any relationship and what I'm not. Um, you know, I got that bleeding heart. I was born that way. It's just so open and so wanting to help everybody. But it's a, it's a thing, when I, an aspect of myself that I can let go of. The best way to be there for someone is to hold yourself in that soul space, that soul alignment. Um, and just listen actively. And that was the last thing I wanted to add to this. Um, that I realized when I'm in those casual relationships, I often just go into that human part that just responds to everything in the normal human way. You know, like if you tell someone something bad happened, they say, I'm sorry. They don't think about it. They don't even have meaning behind it. It's just an automatic response or asking someone, how's your day? And then never listening to the answer. I mean, it's just, and everyone just says good instead of what is really happening and no one's really listening. So that's the other thing I took away from this. I think I could have avoided the whole situation if I really sat there in my, in my soul alignment and really listened and did not provide standard comeback answers. Um, I was just really exhausted after coming back from Italy and it's probably another thing is getting enough rest before you have a bunch of people and their energy in your house. So I'm learning and then I'm sharing with you guys and I hope you'll share with me what you're learning because we're all kind of going through this soul evolution process together. And yes, it is a personal journey. And yes, it is a unique journey for all of us. No one has the same thing. And I know that a lot of us who are going through this spend a lot of time alone. But my love and my joy of being right here, right now in this human body is so I can share with you guys because it's just so exciting what's going on on this planet right now. I know that we have tragedy and politics and hate and all these things, but they're all coming up to the surface to be released. And in the meantime, the rest of us who are over here on our 1,000th or 2,000th life enjoying um, what it's like to be in a physical body without uh, being persecuted for our consciousness or spirituality, just really enjoying being here on Earth. Um, being able to share with people about our spiritual and conscious journeys is just, ah, and I'm talking into a camera that's gonna go on a computer on the internet. Who would have thought this was not happening in our last life? Well, we were uh, hiding in basements and uh, having secret meetings about theosophy. Um, so <laughs> anyhow, thanks for letting me be goofy and watching my video blog and again, Everyone who uh, read the Abundance blog last week, all thousand plus 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 of you and the dozens and dozens of people who sent me private messages and made comments and shared the blog, thank you so much. I want everyone out there to listen to that soul voice to create abundance so we can all go on a big fat vacation. What good is money if you can't go on vacation, right? Anywho, I love you guys. Thank you so much and uh, have a great rest of your week. Bye.